Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This video module will be an application of indifference curve analysis to the problem of relocating a key employee from a low housing cost area to a, a high cost uh, housing cost area. We can deal with this issue by going to a graph uh, such as this one, in which we have put the cost of all of the goods on, um, on the vertical axis and housing on on the horizontal axis. We do this simply because housing is a key uh, consideration in uh, relocating a worker. It happens that uh, we're going to relocate a worker from uh, six miles South Carolina where housing costs are very low. And housing costs are, we will assume, is all that is different between the two areas. The cost of all of the goods uh, in six mile is the same as the housing cost in, in uh, the location where this employee is going uh, to move. Uh, we assume that because housing costs are so low in Six Mile, South Carolina, that the individual can, with a given amount of income, say $100,000 a year, can buy H2 uh, uh, housing. That is, if he buys nothing other uh, than housing. The individual with $100,000 in income can buy A1 of all other, other goods. The individual, of course, uh, settles on some combination, uh, A1 of all of the goods and H1 of, of housing. Now suppose your firm, firm wants to uh, hire this individual from Six Mile and move him to where your headquarters is. Let's assume it's in Irvine, uh, California, which is a very high cost housing uh, area. Uh, the costs of most things from uh, clothing to food are pretty much the same in Irvine as they are elsewhere uh, in, in the country. This means that in Irvine, with $100,000 of, of income, this individual can buy A1 of, um, of all of the goods, just as he could in Six Mile, South Carolina. But with $100,000 of income in, in, uh, in Irvine, uh, the individual can only buy uh, H1 of housing much less than what he could buy in Six Mile, South Carolina. This means that the budget line the individual will face if he's given only $100,000 in, in compensation is going to extend from A1 to uh, H1. And of course this means if, if all uh, your firm does is replace the individual's salary, uh, the individual will move from, will be move from point A to point uh, B, which means that the individual will very likely end up buying less of all of the goods and less housing, which also, of course, means uh, that the individual will very unlikely uh, take the job. Now, let's suppose that the individual uh, demands an income that is a, that compensates him for the greater uh, housing cost that allows him to buy the old combination, combination uh, A. Well, if in fact you provide him with enough income to, to achieve combination A, you're going to provide him with a budget line that moves out to where uh, it intersects uh, at, at A. A increase in income, of course, will move out the budget line in a parallel uh, manner. And so when we draw the, um, the new budget line, uh, it's going to look something like, like this. And that means, of course, that with whatever uh, the income is, the individual is quite able to uh, buy combination A. Uh, but the individual is not likely to end up buying uh, combination A. And the reason is that you have a combination like C that is of equal value to A, and there is some other combination like D that is more of both of all of the goods and housing. So D is preferred to C, and if an individual has a choice between A and, and D, the individual will take uh, D. The moral of the story is that there is an indifference curve that comes down here and is tangent uh, to the 
to uh, this new budget line uh, at a point like, we'll call it uh, E. Uh, moral of the story is that if in fact you compensate this individual for the increased housing costs, that individual can indeed be better off. So if the individual is, is getting paid $100,000 a year in six mile, and that individual demands $130,000 of income uh, in Irvine because there are $30,000 a year greater uh, housing costs, then that individual is actually going to be better off with $130,000 than with uh, the $100,000 in, in six mile. Moral of the story is that you don't have to pay him the hundred and thirty. dollars in spite of his demands. You can, in fact, uh, pay him uh, an amount equal to this. That is, you raise that budget line so that it moves out uh, to the dashed line and is tangent at a point uh, like that. Now that means that the individual will get more money income. Uh, it means that the individual will not be any better off uh, in Irvine than in Six Mile, which is where he would be at point A. Well, you might want to uh, give them just a little bit more. But the moral of the story is you don't have to give them uh, the full uh, demand. So in this kind of analysis, we've suggested that if indeed uh, you're going to relocate a worker from a low housing cost area to a high housing cost uh, area, you don't have to fully compensate the individual for the increase in in housing costs. And there's one simple explanation for that. And that is that much of the individual's income, real income in the low housing cost area was bound up in housing. If in fact you give the individual uh, income to compensate him for the higher cost housing, you're giving him income that can be spent on all kinds of other goods, not just housing. And that amount of income is likely to be uh, more valuable uh, than, than to have all of the benefits uh, captured in uh, housing costs. Uh, thank you very much for being with me.